Yo, what's good, Dev guys? Welcome to part two. In this video, we're going to set up the curves and get started on working with the timelines of C++ that'll be driving those curves and driving the recoil pattern. So what I need you to do is go into your dev folder, right click, create a new folder. We're going to call this curves. And inside of this folder, we're going to right click, go to miscellaneous, and we're going to add two curve floats. So we're going to prefix this as curve and then underscore horizontal recoil that's what we're going to call that and then control w to duplicate that get rid of the one and then we're going to call the second one a vertical recoil now the way that this curve will work is that the uh the the curve that we draw will be the pattern that you see on the wall so imagine zero being if i'm aiming at this wall imagine zero being where my crosshair is and one will be where the recoil pattern takes me uh but that's for up and down for left and right zero would be here centered and as the pattern gets drawn so will your left and right uh movement so let's just let's just do it so if i go into the curve and shift right click uh i'll add uh, not shift right click shift middle click i'll add a uh a key here and make sure you have snapping turned on just for this because we're going to do this we're going to make this tight uh you can go back and edit your curve to your liking turn snapping off but for this we're going to just get it started with snapping so i want to add at zero we want to have no movement but at one we want to have the the weapon move to the right just a little bit and then at two two seconds we want to have the weapon center and then at Actually, we can have it go a little bit to the left and then at three seconds, we could center it. Now, there's a little bit of reasoning behind why I have it at three seconds. And uh, also, you need to remember that both of these curves need to be the same length. So both of them need to have keys that start at zero and keys that start at uh, three. Let me open this up just to have it. Um, but yeah, the reason behind the three seconds is is it basic math. So say I have a gun that shoots 600 rounds per minute, uh, which is 10 bullets a second. So the three seconds coincides with how many bullets we have in our clip. Since since there's 30 bullets in our clip, that's why our recoil curve will take three seconds to complete. Now, okay, say you want to make this more dynamic, your character picks up an attachment that gives him an extended mag that, you know, doubles his, his ammo and takes it to 60 bullets. Well, what you could do is you could click on this curve and right click it and go to post extract and you can cycle it with an offset. So that will basically just keep the curve going endlessly. So this means no matter how many bullets your mag has, uh, you will continue to receive recoil. Uh, you can make it more uh, random by choosing different uh, offsets. So if I want to make it more random, I'll just do ping pong and it makes it to where it's not the same curve as we started with over and over. It just add, It's a repeat of a different curve here. And you see it goes on forever. So yeah, so if I had 60 bullets, that'll take me six seconds to 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 get rid of those since it's double 30 bullets but yeah that's pretty much how th the curves will function so if i highlight these press f and then i want to go ahead and make it a smooth curve so that it, it curves smoothly we can go ahead and fix this right here so everything just moves smoothly here um but yeah so this will be what that left to right recoil will look like on the wall and if we go to our vertical recoil, we can kind of do the same setup. So at zero, we don't want any movement. At one, uh, since p our pitch is inverted, we want a negative value to send the, to send the gun up and a positive value to send the gun down. So we want to send it up to say point zero. Let's do right here, point one. Send it up to point one. And then at two, we want to, let's go ahead and settle a little bit at zero. And at three, we can 
bring it a little bit lower. Actually, we'll change that. We'll change this to bring it a little bit lower, keep that same S curve. And then at three, we'll, we'll center it out. And we can do the same thing, highlight these, press F, and then press auto, give it an auto key, and then click on the, click on the curve and then right click, go to pulse extract, cycle with offset. And that'll just keep it rotating. Go ahead, adjust the curve, make it a little bit better. Okay, and this will be our up and down movement with the uh, recoil system. So we can save that. And we're pretty much done with the editor right now. So I'm gonna close it out. You guys can minimize or close it out if you like. I like to run Unreal Engine from the editor just to keep up with errors. So um, for our recoil to work, we need a few things. We need a, uh, a, a timeline that we'll, that we'll iterate on and we'll bind some functions to the, to the F on timeline float callback that's a part of the the, the timeline um, so type in f timeline and uh you'll need to include if you're not using writer you need to include components timeline components dot h if you're using writer you already got it baby you dig yes sir uh but yeah we're gonna call this our recoil timeline and we want to create a couple of callbacks that uh, when we bind the, the specific floats to the timeline, when we add the floats to the timeline, we want to call these functions. That's And they have to be U functions since they're getting bound to something. So U function, and we want to say void start horizontal recoil. Go ahead and create another one U function and this is going to be called void start vertical recoil and these both need to take in a float value that the value that is getting passed in from our curve will get passed in via this float value so go ahead and pass in a float value for both of those uh, we also need uh, some other, some helper functions just to keep everything in sync. So we need to say void start recoil. And this is what we'll call when we start firing our gun, we'll call void start recoil. And then we'll call void end recoil or reverse recoil. And this is what we'll call when we stop firing our gun to re to reset the recoil. Um, I think that's all we need. Let me see. Do we need any variables? Oh yes, I'm stupid. So we need two U properties. Of course, the actual curves that we're going to be using. These need to be edit default only, blueprint read only, and let's put them in a category of advanced recoil. And go ahead, copy this just so we can have it in our clipboard. We can create a class U curve float pointer. And this is going to be called our vertical curve. And matter of fact, let's go ahead and copy all of this. So we're going to have to type it again. And we're going to call this our horizontal. curve. Okay, with that, I think we're ready to get started on the C++ code. So let's go ahead and uh, press Alt Insert if you're using Rider. If not, you got to create your definitions yourself, baby. Go ahead. Good luck. Good luck. Get Rider. <laughs> I should be sponsored by Rider. Get Rider. Oh, shit. I deleted everything. Uh, so basically in our start horizontal recoil, what we want to do is just add, uh, and this is horizontal, so we're going to add y'all to our controller, which adds y'all to our camera. So the value that we want to pass in, this takes in the float value, we just want to pass in that value. Control save. And for the vertical recoil, all we want to do is add pitch 
input and we want to pass in that value as well. And that's it for, for the, the actual callback functions. So this next step, you probably want to extract this out and do it inside of a custom, uh, inside of a custom uh, function that you can call anywhere. Like for, for my project, I call setup recoil whenever I change guns, whenever I change anything about the weapon. Uh, since my weapon system is dynamic, it has dynamic curves for every gun. I have to set up the curve for every gun. So I have a function called setup recoil. Well, all I do is this stuff here. So um, we create 2F on timeline float. And we call we're gonna call this X recoil curve. Um, and then we're gonna create one more F on timeline float. And it's called this Y recoil curve. So these are the uh, these are the uh, callbacks that we need for the uh, timeline, and uh, you'll see you'll see here. So the reason we use these is when we say our recoil, we get our recoil timeline, and we say add interp float. You'll see that it takes a, f a curve. It takes the interp function that it's going to call whenever the timeline is ticked, and these are optional. The property name. I haven't actually used these yet. I'm pretty sure you can do like a, a switch statement on the name, on the F name, and uh, you wouldn't have to make two curve or add, uh, you wouldn't have to make two functions like I did, but since I've already tested it with two functions, we're just gonna do it that way. Uh, let me make sure I'm still, am I recording? Yes, I'm recording. Jesus Christ, that's scary. To do all this and not be recorded, that'd be scary. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we're, we're gonna add an interp float and we're gonna pass in our, for this one, we're going to pass in our horizontal curve and the insert function that we want to pass in is our X recoil curve. And we'll just leave the uh, F name as, as is, and we're going to do it, but add another one. So add insert float. We're going to call, we'll get our vertical curve and then our Y recoil curve is the insert function that we want to pass in. And uh, the final thing that we want to do is uh, we want to bind our functions to these. Uh, so basically you have to bind the functions that this uh, recoil timeline we'll call. So we have to bind these. So I'll show you here. So if I go um, uh, uh, x recoil curve dot bind u function, we pass in an object, which is this object. And then we have to pass in the f name on the function that we want to bind. See right here, Right here, we added our curve that we want to iterate over. And this is the delegate to the to the function that will be called. But we have to bind the function to the delegate. So let's just type F name. And then for the X recoil, our function is called start horizontal recoil. And I'm gonna actually move this up. I'm gonna move this up underneath here. So it happens before we add the insert float. And then we can do uh, y recoil curve that binds u function and pass in this object f name. And we want to say our start vertical recoil and just to just to you know these actually have to be the same name so control f make sure that this is the same name i like this one control f make sure that this is the same name um so we got that our our timeline is bound it has its our, our delegates are bound our timeline has the floats curves that is going to iterate over and the, the functions that is going to call. 
So what do we need to do next? We need to basically set up the calls for our uh, recoil. So remember we made that start recoil function. So we'll start recoil, all we wanna do here is say recoil timeline dot play from start. And we wanna play it from start because we want the recoil to start from zero every time the player clicks the mouse. For the reverse recoil, all we're gonna do right here, re recoil timeline dot reverse. And we don't reverse from in, we want it to reverse from where it is. Okay. So how this works is that when we fire our weapon, we want to start the recoil. And then when we stop firing our weapon, we want to reverse the recoil. So let's look for um, on start fire. That's why we created these, these uh, like uh, intermediate functions because we want to do separate things inside of them. So we're going to call on start fire and then we're going to start the recoil here. And then on stop fire, we're going to clear that timer and then we're going to reverse the recoil. And we're almost ready to test this, except uh, the curve, it needs to tick. So we need to go to tick, uh, go to the tick function. And inside of, let's not have tick. Okay, we need to create a tick function here. So let's go back to where our other overrides are and go virtual void tick override let's implement that generate implementation by pressing alt enter if you're using writer let's call the super and we also want to go to the constructor and make sure primary actor make sure that primary actor tick dot b can ever tick is equal to true just make sure that's set to true. And then we go back to the tick function. And here, you could just tick the timeline. You could just do this tick timeline and uh, pass in delta seconds for the rate. But for us, we want to save a little bit of um, performance and make this event driven. So we want to say if the 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 recoil timeline that is playing, we want we want to tick the timeline. Now, you advanced user are probably like, why do not why do not say or is uh, reversing? Because when it reverses, uh, sorry, or dot is reversing. Because when it's reversing, we also want to tick the timeline as well to to smoothly. Uh, reverse the recoil well you'll see um later on when i solve this issue we actually need to have these two separated because we need to run some different code if if the timeline is reversing so whoops if the timeline that is reversing we want to also pick the timeline pass in delta seconds and when I get to this code, it'll all make sense. But right now, uh, I think we're ready to test. Let me check my notes. Yep, we add the floats. Yep, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we're ready to test. Let's give it a build. See if we run into any errors here. Oh, I forgot to put a uh, a valid check. So let me go to my begin play. Where is it? should be right here. Okay, right here. We can add a valid check right here. So I got a live template, but if, if you, basically what you wanna do is if we don't have a, um, if we don't have a horizontal curve or if we don't have a vertical curve, because we don't wanna run, uh, we don't wanna add just one track to the timeline. We wanna make sure we have both curves. So if we don't have either of these curves, we wanna return and don't, we don't wanna add this right here. This will just save us from crashing. So uh, I know that it's gonna build properly. I, all I added was a, uh, a, 
uh, null check. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the editor. And when we get in here, the first thing we need to do is go to our character blueprint class, which is in this folder right here, blueprints. And we want to add those curves. So our advanced recoil tab, we want to add our horizontal, our vertical curve for vertical and our horizontal curve for horizontal. And we should, if we go here, Hopefully everything works fine. So if I go to this wall and just hold down my mouse button, you'll see the recoil is, you see that recoil pattern? That's what we drew. But you can see the issue here. If I, um, okay, so if I hold this and get our recoil pattern, you can see it's still playing the recoil too. Uh, let me, uh, 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 that that's the issue. Let me reload real quick so I can show you show you this issue. So if I uh, play the recoil here, I try to move my mouse uh, and it lets me move. But let me reload again. And if I let this play here, you see that it, it reverses the curve, even though we're kind of centered. We don't, we don't, we don't want the curve to reverse even if we're centered. So that's one of the fixes that we'll have to fix. And you can also see if I don't have any bullets in my gun, um, this recoil still starts. So I'm going to go to the, to the uh, on start function, on start fire, let's go here and Actually, we can go to the fire function. So if we, if our current ammo is greater than zero, we want to do this, but uh, we can run an else check on, where is it, on this one. We run an else here, else we want to uh, reverse recoil. Or no, we want to call on stop, on stop fire right here. If I can type right. So if we run out of bullets while we're firing, because since this is ran on the timer, this will get checked every bullet. Boop, boop, boop. As soon as we run out of bullets, it'll call this. So let's go ahead and comp uh, you know, I didn't stop an editor. Let's go ahead and compile that. That'll fix one of the problems. So. Okay, it didn't fix it. Okay. Let's go to stop fire. So Yeah, I don't know why that didn't fix it. Let me see. So let's uh introduce you guys to something that you probably didn't know about. You can use print strings inside of Unreal without doing the GE, the the G engine log. You can go U Kismet system library, and then we can say print string. And it takes in the world, so we're gonna pass in the world. And it takes in a string, we're just gonna pass in a text that says, uh, we no longer have ammo. And we can leave everything else at default. Uh, let's go ahead and build that. Press play. Let's see if that on stop fire gets called when we run out of bullets. Yeah, it's not getting called. Okay, that's weird. Um... Let's see if this is even updating my code when I compile. Let's just put this here inside this fire function. Do this and say, we have ammo. This is part of the debugging process here, guys. Something that you have to get used to. We'll compile that, let's see if that pops up. See if this is even compiling the changes that I'm making. 
Because that might be an error there. No, okay. It, it's detecting that we have ammo. But when we run out of bullets, it doesn't um, detect. So let me make sure I'm running the. Oh, okay. It's because I'm running the else on the wrong side. Okay. Easy to easy to fix there. So just run the else right there. And we don't have context of the world. So let's just put it outside of the scope there. And now this should work. So I can get rid of this print string right here. We don't need to know that. And let's compile. And as soon as we run out of bullets, it should reverse the um, the recoil pattern. All right, so let's go to the wall. Holding down my mouse button. Run out of bullets, reverses it. And you see, that's the issue right there. We don't want that uh, like that. So we're, in the next video, we're going to fix that. I'm also going to fix a couple of other things. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.